Hello, I'm Michael Redman, professional Go player. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the black move, pressing at the 5-4 point, and the following Joseki. So here I have a full board position. I'll show you the opening moves of this example game that I have here. So black has started with two star points and a Karkari against white's 3-4 point, and white has dived into the 3-3 point. And now black presses here. Uh, so this pressing move on the 5-4 point is a move that with computer programs it generally gets a fairly good score in almost any board position and top professionals um, included a lot of strong players have been starting to use it more and more as we research it with computer programs. I would say a board position like this where black has ideas of building a moyo centered maybe on the lower side or including the center of the board with the right side having some potential also. This is the kind of board position where it's relatively easy for black to uh, grasp what the object of this move is in this board position. So white uh, usually will crawl here, black extends and generally white jumps here. So this is the basic joseki and this is actually a position where black can play away. So we can call this already a finished shape or black can continue with a local move. So to start with, um, if black plays away, I'll show you uh, an example here with this full board position. If black plays away, it could be something on the lower side like this. And if we look back to the lower left corner, uh, white's local move is also going to be pushing here. So pushing here on the fourth line is a fairly important move for both black and white in this position. Locally, black might play like this. And we can see that white's plan now will be to start building on the left side and reduce black's um, control of the center of the board. So uh, black might play a hane now, and that would start a fight probably. So this would start a fight in the center of the board. I'm, I'm going to go back to black's push here now. And this is going to be the main subject of my video today. So let's take a closer look at this Joseki and go back a few moves to the beginning of the Joseki sequence. So when black uh, presses here, uh, it's generally an overplay for white to push through and cut. Here. So this move is the type of move that white could play if white already has a pincer stone. So if there's a stone here or here, a white stone in one of these, one of these five places, for instance, uh, that would be a case where white could push through and cut here and have uh, an even fight, or something close to an even fight. In this video, I'll just show you the variation um, where white has pushed through and cut without a pincer. Black can squeeze the corner like this. And um, black will end up playing both sides. Um, you can see that the fact that white did not have a pincer stone on the lower side is making a big difference here. Where black has plenty of room to move out to the side. And white's corner is being a bit cramped here. Black will end up playing on both sides. And white's corner group is not, not yet 100% alive. So this is relatively easy for black to play. It's an easy variation for black. White's group in the center is not very strong either. So we'll go back to the main variation. When black presses and white has not already played a pincer stone, you can be fairly certain that white's probably going to crawl here. And black extends and white jumps. So now I'm going to take a look at the local variation where black starts pushing on the fourth line. White will extend and black pushes again. Once you've started pushing, it's a good idea to continue pushing here, building thickness, a line of stones that will radiate thickness towards the center of the board. It's going to um, create some influence for black in that direction. And black will have potential moyo in the center. In return, black is giving white some territory on the left side. So you have to be okay with the idea that black, white is going to get some territory on the left side probably spending some extra stones in order to do that. White's best local move is the Hane here, and White will probably play a double Hane at this point. So, 
This is a good point for Black to think about pushing through and cutting on the second line. And if Black pushes through here and cuts at this timing, this is a relatively easy time for Black to play this move because Black knows that White will have to connect at the B7 point. If White uh, captures the one stone like this, Black will just get a double Atari here, and this will simply be very good for Black. It's a good variation for Black. So White has to connect at this point, and Black gets to play the extra forcing move here. Once Black has pushed through and cut at the second line, it's very important for Black to immediately play this attachment at the 3-3 point. If Black plays away with this move, uh, for instance, uh, in the center of the board, this is the best move that Black has. If Black plays away, though, White will immediately kick here and the exchange of the push through and cut here for these two white stones. It turns out it's not doing much good for Black. It's actually a bad exchange. So once Black has, has played that exchange, it's very important for Black to make use of it by playing this attachment. And White will actually answer. This is a very big move. Even if White plays an Atari in the center of the board, in this case, capturing the two white stones at the edge of the board is actually a very big move. When black captures here, this creates a, a ter territory in the corner, which is uh, more than 15 points, and it's actually close to 20 points. And it's taking several points away from white also. So it's um, more than 20 points. It's getting close to 30 points, so almost equal to the ponuki that white's going to get in the center of the board. And Sometimes this sort of depends on the uh, position on the left side of the board. So let's take a look at this in the full board position again. Like this. In a position like this where black does have some room to do something on the left side, this is perfectly okay for black. Black will, uh, just to show you an example of how it might continue, black can peep here. And then slide into the upper left corner. So in this case, Black is going to have plenty of room to do something on the left side of the board. I would expect a sequence like this. And it looks like Black's going to be all right on the left side. So the fact that Black had enough room to do this on the left side of the board uh, was fairly important um, in this whole variation. In this case, Black is going to be running away with a territorial lead. So I would say this is slightly better for Black. So going back to the main variation... White will actually answer here, and then Black can continue in the center of the board with this cut and the extension in the center. So th with this whole sequence, Black was giving White territory on the left and building towards the center of the board. So you can see that areas like the lower side here and the general central area of the board, all of these areas are potentially going to be controlled by Black, and Black's going to have an advantage in the fights that continue here. In return, White is getting something on the left side of the board. White's local move, uh, it could be, for instance, this. Black would be perfectly happy with White playing there because then Black will um, play on the lower side. And you can see that um, Black's territory on the lower side is a very nice moyo Black has. In the, um, on the left side, White is getting a large territory that looks like it's going to be maybe a boundary on the fifth line. So it's a lot of territory there. But Black does have this 3-3 three, three point to invade later in the game, which will take a significant part of that territory away from white. So and that's part of the equation also. The fact that black can reduce the left side from the corner is also fairly important in this game. Otherwise, if white wants to play more aggressively, uh, white can push here, but black will play a honey on the top of two stones. And this could lead to the, some fighting in the center of the board but black is playing a, a shape move here when black is playing at the head of two stones and i'd say black has uh, good prospects in this fight in the center of the board and if i take this any further it will lead to a huge fight in the center of the board which will be pretty difficult to memorize for people watching the video so i'll stop here just um say that black does have good potential in this fight in the center of the board uh, white could actually play away at this point feasibly. Um, it's an idea for white to be playing something away, maybe towards the lower side. Um, and although black can capture no ladder, 
it might in this board position it might be more important for white to be um, taking a position on the lower side of the board so that was uh, the basic joseki for black um, pressing on five four point and I'll go back to this point um, where black plays the cut the moment white has played the double, double hane uh, this is the easiest point for black to play this cut and black can be assured that white has to connect at the b7 point which is fairly important um, and it's it gets more this will get more ambiguous if black uh, misses this chance to play the cut so this is i'm going to call this a key move in this joseki so that was my video for the basic joseki here i'll just take you to the finishing position where black is extended towards the center in which black can create a strong group and build thickness towards the center of the board so thank you for watching to the end of this video and subscribe to my channel for more more like this um i hope you enjoyed see you next time